Hello everyone and welcome to ML Dan. Uh, today we're going to continue with our talk regarding the artificial neural networks. But first and foremost, let's just do a little bit of recap about what we talked about the last time. So we said that artificial neural networks um, are nothing but a function estimators. We said that uh, when you have your data, there is a secret um, unknown function that maps the input to the output. And we said that we have no idea what it is, but we are trying to approximate it, yes? And we said that artificial neural networks learning is equal to learning that estimation. And we want to make that estimation as accurate as possible. We call that F hat. And we said that F hat is, uh, is supposed to get as close as possible to the true function F. And we said that um, there are different applications of artificial neural networks, um, for example, handwritten character detection, um, face recognition, speech recognition, and stuff like that. Today we're going to talk about the biological motivation behind artificial neural networks. <coughs> now, uh, artificial neural networks are sort of inspired by biological learning systems, or BLS. Now, if you think about your body, your body is consisted of consists of um, millions and millions of uh, little uh, electrical uh, pulsing units called neurons. They're kind of interwoven, connected to each other through this massive and dense network all around your body, every bit of your every inch of your body. Um, that is why uh, we say that BLS is actually a massive interconnection of neurons. Yeah. And every neuron is, as I said, a pulsing unit. So depending on what your brain orders your, the, the, the neural system of your body to do, every one of these neurons has the ability to actually fire an electrical signal. Now, that electrical signal would be passed towards all of, all of its neighbor neurons, right? So this neuron is connected to other neurons. Those neurons, upon receiving that signal, depending on the strength of that signal, they're going to pass on that message, that electrical signal, to their neighbors. And this propagates through, throughout your body. And say the ultimate <laughs> conclusion of that is you, li you lift your, uh, your arm. Like all of these electrical pulses has to go through uh, from your brain all the way towards your muscle so that your muscle decides to go up, right? So the artificial neural network is also, uh, just like a, a BLS, is a densely interconnected set of simple units, right? So if you think about it, um, we've got this word um, simple units over here, yes? And we have here interconnection of neurons in a biological system. So you can, you're not actually wrong in assuming that uh, these neurons... In, uh, in your biological um, learning systems are actually same as uh, the these simple units in your artificial neural networks yes so you can see right here that the imitation starts this is how uh, how we are trying to mimic uh, biology so, for example, if you look at the picture over here, uh, in the picture on the top, uh, you'll see this massive uh, and dense uh, interconnection of neurons in your body, while in the picture at the bottom, you'll see a nice visualization of an artificial neural network. You see that every one of these neurons, for example, this one, has so many connections coming into it from other neurons, and it has so many connections getting out of it to this layer of neurons, right? So they all cooperate together to uh, accomplish a, um, a common task, if you will. And you know, the beauty of artificial neural networks, please remember that, is that every one of these guys, every one of these units are quite simple in, in, si simple in what they do. Very, very simple units, okay? Uh, when I say simple, I mean in terms of the mathematical operations uh, that they apply on their input signal. Okay, they're very, very simple. But the beauty of artificial neural networks is that throughout all like a zillion number of connections that every neuron has to other neurons, even though each part is super ridiculously simple, 
the collection of these simple units are amazingly powerful. They can deliver super complicated tasks uh, with high accuracy. Uh, th these are the stuff that we're going to talk about in the future. But just remember that we have a collection of simple units that can accomplish a beautiful task in the end through their cooperation with each other. Now, um, if you look at this picture over here, just ignore the text for a second. What you see here uh, is that uh, is a bunch of layers, right? Um, this first layer over here, this first layer over here is called the input layer, right? This is where your data is fed into your neural network. This layer and this layer, anything in between actually, are called the middle layers or, just remember this for now, the hidden layers. Okay? And the final layer that in this example has only one neuron is called, as you might have guessed, the output layer. This is where the actual decision, prediction, or whatever uh, your function estimator, aka your artificial neural network decides, will come out. And you'll see the ultimate output, yes? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, each one of these guys, like this guy over here, this guy over here, this guy over here, they are called neurons or our imitation of neurons. Now, if you think about these edges, right? They're literally called edges. <clears throat> now, we're going to talk about this uh, in the next video, but remember that the e these edges have, have weights associated with them. So every one of those black arrows uh, has a weight, which determines the value, the power of connection between the two ends of it. <clears throat> so if the weight of an edge is, is high between two neurons, it means that they are very, these neurons are very dependent on each other. It means that if the first one fires, there's a very high probability that the second one will fire as well, because they are sort of correlated to each other. But just have it at the back of your head. I'm not going to digress into it. It's a topic for our next talk. <clears throat> now, let's pay attention to the text over here. In an artificial neural network, um, for every unit over here, every neuron that you see here, there are possibly several outputs. As you can see, for example, for this guy, there are one in the next layer. We have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four neurons. That it's connected to and uh, in an artificial neural network typically every neuron's output is a single real valued output yes now for example this is different from an actual biological neural network because even though an artificial neural network's neurons output is just one simple value a neuron in your body doesn't generate just one constant value it actually generates this uh, complicated, this complex time series data, collection of data that are correlated to each other. There's a meaning in that pattern that it generates, right? So ANNs are trying to mimic biological systems, but we can't really say that they're doing a brilliant job. So there are uh, actually researchers out there that are trying to focus on how can we make ANNs more similar to BLS, and there are other uh, researchers out, uh, out there that really don't care about that part and they're just trying to develop neural networks regarding, uh, I mean, regardless of their similarity to the biological systems. <clears throat> and the latter is of our interest, actually. Now, BLS processes are highly parallelized. Remember that for every little... Uh, so, so in your body, they are usually 10 to the power of 11. This is massive, guys. I mean... I can't even begin to understand how big this is, but you've got a, almost 10 to the power uh, 11 neurons uh, in your body. And do you know, on average, each one of those neurons is connected to how many neurons? You're going to be amazed. 
each one of these neurons on average is connected to nearly 10 to the power 4 other neurons, right? So if each one of them fires, on average, 10 to the power 4 more neurons will get affected by that. So one neuron is connected to nearly 10,000, which is amazing, actually. Now, ANNs do not fully reflect BLSs. As I said, the output of the neurons are different. And uh, again, researchers are following two different paths here. What we're interested in, 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 is in, the, in, in this uh, series of neural networks is the latter case where we don't care about the similarity to the BLS processes, but we are just trying to uh, develop effective artificial neural networks with no regards uh, to the compatibility to the BLS systems. Right, thank you very much. I hope that this has been informative for you. So we talked about the biological motivation behind uh, artificial neural networks. We introduced the idea of the input layer, hidden layers, and the output layer. We said that any layer between the input layer and the output layer is called a hidden layer. You could have many, many of them. And we also saw that every neuron is connected to many, many other neurons and could receive connections from many, many neurons. And we also learned that every one of those connections is called an edge, which has a weight. And finally, we learned that ANNs do not reflect uh, the biological systems fully, but we are not going to focus on that uh, in this course, and we're just going to continue with uh, discussing artificial neural networks and trying to develop, uh, understand how they're developed and how they work. So uh, I hope that this has been informative for you. And on behalf of Amal Dan, take care of yourself and goodbye.